If you use XLOOKUP, the tricks that I'm going to show you in this video are going to blow your mind. Now, when you use XLOOKUP to look up for a value and then return a value from a corresponding column, it's actually not returning a value. It's actually returning a cell reference. And that is a big deal because then there are so many awesome things you can do with it. So let me show you what I mean and show you some cool examples of what you can do with XLOOKUP. So here I have this example where I have student names in column A and their scores in column B. And let's say that I have the student name and I want to fetch her score. Now I can do that using XLOOKUP as well as VLOOKUP. But as I said, there is a difference between how XLOOKUP and VLOOKUP work. So here let's first use XLOOKUP where this is my lookup value, which is E2. Then this is the range in which I'm going to look for the name. And then this is the column from which I want to return the value. And now when I hit enter, you get 84, which is a value from this cell, which is fine. Now let's see how VLOOKUP works. Now I use the VLOOKUP function where this is E3 is the cell that has the student's name. Then this is the column, uh, the table array from which I want to get the result. And I want to get the result from the second column and I want it to be an exact match. And now when I hit enter, it again returns 84. Now this is fine. But now here is the difference. As I said, when you're using XLOOKUP, it is not returning a value. It is actually returning a cell reference. And let me show you. So here, let me copy this formula and let me put this formula within the cell function where I would say, give me the address of a cell reference. Now, in this case, if I give it the XLOOKUP function, this gave me a value which was 84. But in the backend, it returns a cell reference, which is the cell reference of the score that was returned. See what happens when I hit enter, it gives me B4. And B4 is this cell where I have the score for Jenny. But would it also happen with VLOOKUP? It wouldn't because VLOOKUP actually returns a value. It doesn't return a cell reference. So let me show you, I use the cell function actually. Let me copy this formula first. Now, when I come here and I use the cell function where I would look for the address. And when I use this function, it is going to show me an error because it doesn't recognize this as a cell reference. This is actually returning a value 84. So while here you both, you see both of these cells return the value, in reality, XLOOKUP returns a cell reference. Now, why is it a big deal? Because when you know that you can return the cell reference of a lookup value, you can do some amazing things with it. Let me show you. So here again, I have the same data set and I've already used the XLOOKUP function to get the result. But now if I want to get the row number of the result, which has the score for Jenny, I can use the row function. And now when I use this within the row function and hit enter, it gives me four, which means that not only can I get the score, I can also get the exact row number where the cell is. So it tells me exactly that this is row number four, where I have the result. If you want to get the column number, you can again do the same thing. Copy this formula, the XLOOKUP formula, come here and use the column function and then put the XLOOKUP function within it. Now, the reason this is working again is because XLOOKUP is returning a reference and then the row function and the column function uses it to fetch the row number and the column number. This is something that you cannot do with VLOOKUP. Now, one important thing I want to mention here is that this functionality of XLOOKUP returning the cell reference has been copied from another function, which is the index function. So index function also returns the cell reference. And I think they, these are the only two functions that does this. Now, here is another use case where this could be useful. I have these students names and their scores. And let's say I want to get the score for Jenny. So I'm going to use the XLOOKUP function and use F2, which has the lookup value, which has the name Jenny. Then lookup array are all these names. And let's say I want to get the score in this column, which is score for physics. And now when I hit enter, it gives me this result. But let's say you're working with a data set where you want to get the result in the previous row or in the column that is to the right. You can use the offset function on this result because this is actually returning a cell reference. So I can use the off set function. And then this is my reference. And then here I can specify how many rows or columns I want to offset. For example, let's say I want to offset it by two columns. I can use zero as the row and two as the column. And now when I hit enter, it gives me the result here. So this is 
this is where I was getting the result as 53. But now when I used offset to offset it by two columns, I could get this result. So if you're looking for a value and then you want to get the value in the previous column or three columns uh, to the right or three rows to uh, below or above, you can use offset on XLOOKUP. Now here is a really awesome example. I have these scores and I want to get the score for Jenny for this subject. And I have these drop down lists here where I can make the changes. Now in this case, uh, let's use the formula, which is let's say X lookup formula, where this is the lookup value for Jenny. And I want to get the entire score for Jenny because this is a two way lookup. I would first have to do it for the name and then for the subject. So in this case, my lookup array is this entire thing and my return array are going to be all these scores. So what this is going to do is it is going to return all the scores for Jenny in a row. So you can see it gives me 53, 39 and 67 here because of this. Now, because I want to get the result for physics only, there are two ways to do this. Now, regularly what people do is they are going to put XLOOKUP within an XLOOKUP function, which is a nested XLOOKUP. But here is the trick. If I use a space character after XLOOKUP, this space character actually becomes something called as an intersect operator. Now, this means that if I put another XLOOKUP function here, this is going to give me whatever is common in between these two XLOOKUP ranges. So for example, let's say, let me put the function here. So I'm going to use X lookup here and I'm going to look all the scores for physics. So let's say this is my lookup value. This is my lookup array and my return array are all these scores. And when I hit enter, it gives me all these scores here. Now what is happening is I have this score for Jenny and I have all the scores for physics. So if I want to get the score for Jenny in physics, I want the cell, which is the intersection of Jenny in physics, which is this cell here, which is 39. And I can do that with the intersect operator. So let's just use this formula. Come here. Now I have this XLOOKUP function. I would put a space character and then put the next XLOOKUP formula that gives me the result for physics. So there's one formula that gives me the result for Jenny, all the scores, and one formula that gives me the result for physics, all the scores. And because I'm using a space character, which is an intersect operator, see what happens when I hit enter, it gives me 39. So it goes through this result as well as this result and gives me the intersection, which is 39. And see, it works if I change this to Arjun, it gives me 94, which is physics. If I change this to, let's say math, it gives me 41, which is here. So this is a trick where you can use X lookup with intersect operator because X lookup returns a reference, not the value. Now here is another really cool example. I have this data set and I have these tasks, their priority and a couple of additional information. Now what I want to do is I want to extract all the tasks that are between medium and high. So I want to extract all of these cells, references, and then get all of these tasks. Now, if I'm using XLOOKUP alone, I can fetch the medium first medium value or the last medium value or the high or the last high value and fetch this, but I cannot fetch this entire range. But because XLOOKUP returns a cell reference, you can do this. Let me show you. So here I'm going to use the XLOOKUP function where this is my lookup value. My lookup range is going to be this entire thing and my result or return, return array is going to be this range. Now, when I hit enter, it gives me database optimization, which is this cell. But because X lookup returns a reference, I can start from here and then go up to here, which is the last value for high. So let's create the formula for this one as well. So let's use X lookup where this is my lookup value. This is my lookup array. This is my return array. And because I want it to look till the last value here, till the last one, I'm going to use this value search last to first. And now when I hit enter, it gives me bug fixing, which is here in the end. Now I want everything in between. So what I'm going to do is this returns a cell reference. This returns a cell reference. I'm going to just create a range. So let's delete this function, come here. And I have the first lookup value that gave me database optimization. Then I'm going to put a colon and then put the next lookup function and see what happens when I hit enter. It gives me everything that is in between medium and high. If I change this to, let's say medium to critical, 
this is going to return everything that is in between these two values. So you can create your own dynamic ranges because XLOOKUP returns a cell reference and then you can create your own range using it. Now here again, I have the same data set where I have these tasks and the priority. And I want to start from the high value priority and extract all the tasks after it. Now again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to create a cell reference. So here I'm going to use the XLOOKUP function. This is my lookup value. Then this is my lookup array. And then this is the return array. Now, if I hit enter, it gives me one single value, which is performance testing, which is the first task with high priority, but I want all the tasks after it, but I do not know how many tasks are after it. So what I can do is I can come here and I can use something like a 1000, which is a large number, which I know is going to cover all the tasks before the one that is returned by XLOOKUP. Now, if I hit enter, it gives me something like this, where it gives me all these tasks, but then the cells that are blank, they are going to return zero. But thankfully, there is a function in Excel that would allow me to remove all those blank cells. And that function is called trim range. So now when I use trim range, it is going to get rid of all these extra blank cells that are retur returning zero and I would have only the result that I want. So starting from high, it gives me all the result till the end. If I start from medium, it is going to start from medium, which is database optimization and give me all the results till the end. So again, an example that could be useful and this is possible because XLOOKUP returns a reference. That's it in this video. I hope you found this useful. If you're liking these videos, please let me know in the comment section and subscribe to this YouTube channel so that you never miss out on any new Excel tips video I come up with. Thank you and have a nice day.